Hi, folks. Frank the Best Geek here. Well, got a situation today where we had a customer that uh, was a German roach. It's an apartment complex. We do a ton of that. Probably 20 to 30 percent of our business. Um, it's, last year was 30 percent of our business is single unit, either condos or apartments. I mean, we have thousands and thousands and hundreds of thousands of apartments in Miami. Um, we do a ton of them. Um, 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the tech nails it, not a problem. It's these 1% that he didn't look because he followed protocol, but didn't go the extra step. And what I try to teach people is you got to be incredibly, insatiably curious. When you see something that doesn't look normal, stop and ask yourself, why is this happening? The problem is when you're in tech mode and it happens to every tech, it happens to me, it happens to you, especially a tech that's a one and two year tech. He's looking at the route, he's looking at his time, he feels pressured and he just doesn't have the time to sit there and start poking around the way he should have. Now, you know, it's been stressful lately. And I'm going to be doing a series, a bunch of series of podcasts on workplace burnout, workplace stress, um, workplace just discontentment in the general and it has to do with people being overworked, underappreciated, underpaid. It comes down to that. Um, you don't have enough work-life balance. Um, this is, you know, I hire a lot of young people, um, mostly 24, you know, 24 to 30 to 30 something. Um, they're millennials and Generation Z. That's mostly what I employ. Um, and we, we, we got this one situation where the client called me immediately. You know, I, I sold her. When I sell, I sell a package deal. I say, look, it's going to take three shots. Usually we do the initial service. We do a follow-up. And then we do a third follow-up just to make sure we got everything. Because that third monitor, visual inspection and the third monitor is what really lets us know how everything is. Plus the customer experience. Generally, these apartments... By the time they call us, they've had, they've tried to do it themselves. They've fogged, they've bombed, they've sprayed pyrethroids all over the place. They've hired one or two companies. In her case, this had been going on for probably a little bit over a year now. She was already burned by another company who said, oh, I need to be here every month in order to control this to which I say baloney because we've never done that. Most of our people don't even call us back after the third service. We can't even get them to do maintenance services. There's pretty much a one-time service, one and done, because they're renters. They're not going to invest in their in this unit. Um, they're paying their own way because they're renting it from an owner, which is a condo. The owner says, no, it's in your contract that you got to pay for all road service and anything under $150. It's a condo association. The condo can't, association can't get involved because they can't touch the inside of a unit. This is a big mess that we have to deal with in Miami with the amount of condos that there are. And then they turn them and they turn them into rentals. Short-term rentals, long-term rentals. So it's a huge, huge problem for us. And she already had gotten burned by another company who had failed to control it. The point source was in the pantry. It was a bag of chickpeas, garbanzos. What tipped me off to look in there first was is when I'm doing my inspections, that I, we had done the initial, and she's like, I'm seeing them walking through the, the hallway now into the rooms. The apartments are really small. These are like 600 square feet apartments. They're not big. And I said, well, that's perfectly normal. It's the normal experience. They eat the bait. They lose sight of where they're going, and they start going wandering. She says, well, it's, it was better the first, and then it got bad again. So my tech goes out to do the follow, sends me the pictures of the monitors. I said, well, it's, you know, it's a, it's a medium infestation. It's not heavy. Um, 
a day later, after two days later, she's calling me and says, they're walking all over the place. Well, they're probably getting contaminated. So after that second call, she was agitated. And I said, you know, she's probably being unreasonable expectation of what, you know, how many are you seeing? Well, she said only like one or two. I said, well, you know, it wasn't a heavy infestation. The tech told me it's not a heavy infestation. I don't see a ton of things everywhere. This is why I am adamant about following our protocol, whether it's a light infestation, whether it's a heavy, I don't want the tech treating where he thinks he only saw the infestation. I know this goes against a lot of IPM principles, but every time we don't do it my way, it bites us in the ass. So I said, okay, he says, man, it's not, not extensive. I looked, I looked everywhere. You're going to see a video of what we, what I found and what he missed. Why do I do this? Because he's human. Techs are human. They make judgment calls. If he's, if he's feeling stressed that day and, and there's a lot of stops, usually I cap it off about 11 stops, no more than 11 stops in a day. If he's got to do long commutes, where we're doing territories where they're long commute, you know, we're, we're looking at eight stops, tops. Gets it done in about, you know, between six and eight hours, no more than eight hours. Never works more than eight hours, usually about seven and a half. You know, rarely does he work in the eight hours. Um, it's just when you have more than one initial in a day, this is why I don't like to do more than one initial in the day. But we're, we're stressed. We're feeling what everybody else in the industry is feeling. The fact that, and so what was my solution to slow the growth down a little bit instead of hiring a bunch of techs and just, you know, doing what everybody does in growth mode, just hire people and keep putting them out and don't train them properly. Don't invest time in them. I don't have the time to invest right now in people. I have to, you know, I, I have to get me another tech, but I'm gonna wait till the end of the year. We're building out a new unit. You know, what did I do to slow the growth down? I raised my prices. So now, instead of doing two starts in a day, we're only doing one. But we're making almost twice as much. That's a strategy. Um, we're still not losing income. I got to get creative. But I got to take those risks as owner. I got to be willing to say, yeah, we're going to sell it for more. We're going to do less production. Everybody's dream, right? Well desperate times we can do that and we have to and we learn from the desperate times to do things that we haven't done before simply because things have been good so I go out I start inspecting the green weevils tip me off oh she's got a green weevil problem too he didn't see that look in the closet and I see these roaches coming out when I'm moving the packets I look inside and 60 roaches pop out at me. Well, he had put bait around there in the bottom of the floor and he put a monitor and all these dead roaches are there. But the problem is they were inside a bag of chickpeas and when I open up this bag, there's nothing but frass, excrement in there covering the chickpeas, which has been probably going on for a year. She had bought it from a supermarket and brought it in and in one of these little Cuban supermarkets, which I tell people I hate shopping at because the pest control is terrible. They pay the lowest fee. They'll pay $45 for a 20,000 foot, you know, store and pay, you know, 85 bucks a month. And this is why I don't do it. And her husband loves to shop there and she's Aldi and Publix. Well, the beans came from that place, which were infested. And the roaches, because none of those brands that she had in there, you're going to see the video, the Publix or Aldi carry. They do a very good job at, you know, the pest control as far as down here. Um, I've never found any problems, and I shop exclusively at Aldi, usually in Publix. So, thank you guys. Good plug there. Um, I'm waiting for my check. Um, and I look at it, and it's just, the bag is infested with just, you're going to see the video. It's It's... And the guy didn't check because a lot of the time the technicians, he's one of, he's a little introverted, great guy, loving, caring, but doesn't, you know, feels awkward sometimes touching people's stuff. And we're in a business where we got to touch people's stuff. We ask for permission. Listen, can I move all this? 
If he would have noticed the green weevil, he probably would have stumbled across it. That's what tipped me off. Plus all the dead roaches on the floor. I'm like, why are all these dead roaches in this pantry on the floor? There's no water in here. There's no food. It's not near the trash can. What's the deal? Having a curious nature. Why, why, why? A lot of the times we don't want to ask why because we annoy people. If you're going to be really good at being a technician, you got to have this insatiable curiosity for asking why is this happening? And a lot of the times when you ask why, it comes across as accusatory. Like, why do you keep asking me all these questions? People get it, people get irritated when you ask too many questions. So a lot of people don't like to ask questions. He comes from a family where the family doesn't like asking a lot of questions. Um, you know, cultural things matter. Psychological things matter in how a tech is put together. Too many things. I have an intimate knowledge of my techs. I have conversations. I know what's going on at home. And, you know, so I can coach them and I can deal with them. This is what a, a service manager should be doing. Not being in his office filling out reports that he's embellishing anyway because the numbers aren't good. He should be out in the field with his people finding out what's wrong. So by the second call, she's frantic. I'm like, no, I'm not sending the tech out. I'm going to go look. What the hell's going on? We found it. We found the problem. He did the protocols pretty much. He missed a couple of spots. He looked like he rushed this one a bit. And guys, this is the reality of training. People are not robots. They're, they're, they're very few people are just systematic that they just do everything the same way every day. You know, I am systematic. I wear the same clothes every day. I eat the same breakfast every day. I will change up my, my lunches or my dinners. But I, in the morning, I don't wanna have to think. I have the same eggs with the same English muffin. The only thing I do is I change it. I decide whether I want Canadian bacon or I want, you know, Mexican sausage. Whether I want them over easy or whether I want them as an omelet. I don't want to think in the morning. I want to get up. I want to put on my clothes. I want to get focused on doing what I have to do. Not everybody's wired this way. I don't wake up really till after 10 o'clock. I'm a night owl. I like working at night. Like last night I was up working on a special project that I've been wanting to work on forever. Haven't been able to, I was up till midnight. I was up at five. 12.30 I went to sleep. I was up at 5.30 this morning. Not everybody has my discipline. Not everybody has what I have. This is why I'm an owner and not an employee. It's DNA. So, your people are gonna screw up. You're gonna screw up. Take it everything as, with a grain of salt, not a great assault. Stop being a perfectionist because you're gonna find out that this world is so imperfect right now that perfectionists are having a hard time dealing with the reality of the world. Things didn't line up the way they envisioned it in their five-year plan. This is the time to be patient with people. People are at home. People are angry, people are upset, people have lost jobs, they've lost relatives, they've lost family members, there's been a lot of loss this year. Empathy and compassion is going to win the day. That's what I'm trying to focus on, I'm trying to keep my eye on the prize. What's really important? It's people over profit right now. Yes, we are growing, we are being successful, we are doing good things but I'm more focused on my people's health mentally. I mean, this is a college kid who is going to college full-time and still working 32 hours for me a week. But I make sure he has weekends off, that he's not working evenings. Sometimes he can't finish the route and it's like, man, it's late already. Call it a day. That can be moved to Nick, that's a maintenance service. That can be moved till next week. That can be moved to another day. We got some spots. Let's end it here. Don't work Saturdays. I ask them sometimes, can you work a Saturday? I really need you. But that's rare. When I, Sometimes you'll say, listen, I need a day off. 
because I got this going on or I need to leave early. My friend is coming in from out of town. I want to leave early. Um, I won't put it. If you communicate with me, I, on that day, I don't put any more stuff on your route, even though I know you're finishing early. Those are the things that go a long way in dealing with your people. The problem is when you're a middle manager and the owners are wanting profit first, profit only, you know, it's it's the profit motive that I, I live, I'm in a different mindset. I'm going to be talking a lot over the next couple of months about workplace burnout. I've been burned out. I've been burned out more than once. I know what that's like. So I am, I'm, I'm being very sensitive right now to things that are happening because this we're still not post-COVID. We're post the initial trauma of COVID and the shock and awe of it all and, 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 and just dealing with it. And now we're a little bit more comfortable, at least I am, I can't speak for everyone. But we gotta have, you know, so she was upset. I'm gonna deal with him on the training. Sometimes the customer drives a technician nuts and the technician just wants to get out of there. She was one of those that she already been burned. She's been dealing with it for a year. She hired a company, the company failed. It's a trust issue. She doesn't trust anybody right now because nobody solved it. So understanding the history, talking to the client, and understand the history of what's been happening. Um, but now she knows that I care. Now she trusts me. Now she knows that I was thorough, that I found where the problem was. I found the point source. I put it all in a bag for her. I got it out of the house. I, I cleaned that whole area out. I swept it. I It's not my job to clean up. Well, it's not mine either, but... I thought I should do that for the client and remove all those dead roaches and not leave the reminder of what she still has a problem with. Pulled the fridge, swept everything. There were thousands of roaches dead behind the fridge. He had done a great job there. There were monitors there. I know he put the monitors down because I know he moved the fridge. I know he moved the stove. There was a monitor there. There was a monitor in the closet. There was a monitor outside in, in the areas he was trying to monitor because he couldn't find where the heavy infestation was to justify the amount of roaches he was having. It didn't click. He missed a couple of spots, but nothing that would have eventually gotten solved. So I hope this helps a lot of you owners, a lot of you service managers. When a customer complains, my rule is the technician has three shots. But this person was at their wit's end already because it's going to be the straw that broke the camel's back. The relationship was already strained from the beginning because she had been burned. She was dealing with so many things. God knows if she's dealing with something else in her personal life. Frontline workers, frontline service technicians, frontline people are taking the blunt of the anger from the public for political reasons, for financial reasons, for personal reasons. You know, there are people who have lost 10, 11 family members. They're stressed, they're, they're hurting, they're in pain. You know, part of my job is to be a salesman, to be a business owner, to be a coach, to be a mentor, but also to be a minister to people. I'm called the ministry. So initially, man, I think she's being, my initial thought is I'm going to give her her money back. She's being unreasonable. Let's just end this and not worry about it. And then I start and I said, dang, she's right. We messed up. We failed. So I redid the entire service again, cleaned all that out for her, took the bags of contaminated food, put it in a bag, took it out of the house, wiped it all down, left it nice and clean, and we will see her in 30 days. And by then, she's gonna need probably another service. It was pretty heavy because of that. And we'll see, we'll see how this goes. I'm gonna let you guys see the videos of what I found. Um, 
and uh, have a spectacular day. This is after one month. We're doing the follow-up service, which the tech already did. I'm doing a callback on this, but this is a beautiful thing. This is what you want to see. See that right there? That's a male. Look how damaged those wings are. These are all males. Look how damaged. 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 All these nymphs are damaged. They're probably in the third, fourth instar. These are starting to show some damage. Probably third instar. Why? Point source IGR disc. We're using Niban in Tice 10, Mother Earth on the board to attract them. But look at that wing deformation. Now, these are all males. And that is a beautiful thing. So, behind the fridge, behind here, you're always going to have an infestation. Here's the evidence. There's the excrement. Why do you have an infestation? There's heat. There's water and there's access to food really close by. When we pull this back, there are the Uthika. There's a gravid female with an egg hiding back there. There's an egg that is getting ready to hatch. If it hasn't hatched already. She dropped it, but she's back there. There she is right there. You see her walking. Look how bad that infestation is behind here. So eso que se ve son huevos. Eso es excremento de la cucaracha. De la cantidad de infestación que hay detrás de esta red. Por eso que él le metió gel aquí, por eso se murió, pero se comieron todo el gel. There it is. There they are. There's a serious infestation behind. Look how much excrement there is. There's inside. If you look, you see a gravid female walking. There's one right there. There's, there she is. There's, there's a, a roach walking. So yeah, it's pretty bad back here. And this is why you always have to pull the fridge. And look if possible. A lot of times you're going to spray behind a fridge. You're not going to get this. Because you're not going to reach it. Okay, so there you see the feces, and there was a nymph there just now. There he is, right in there. Look, there is the infestation in there. This is why you see me, that I put the bait in that crack. And there they are, coming in and out of there. You miss an opportunity when you leave a crack to get it where you don't bait that area. You lose the opportunity. This is why not seeing roach evidence in an area doesn't preclude that there isn't any and that you're not going to get them. Look at how many dead roaches we have yet. Bait was not put here. There's a live gravid female. She's got an Uthika. There it is. She's got the egg on her, the egg casing. No bait was put. I just put the bait here just now. We just put the bait. Putting the bait behind the, the stove because there was no sign. This is why I have a beef about not following protocol and treating all areas regardless of your what your inspection said because you're not going to see this until 30 days later and know that you had a problem back here when we put the monitor. The monitor lets us know we do have a problem, but also it shows us where the problem is reducing by less catches. So... Protocol, policy, procedure to do every area that you know the pest is going to go to, whether there is no sign. There is no sign here, except down here of an infestation. That's it. Look at the look at the feces. There is no feces except down here. There's no feces here. There's no feces up there. There's no feces under the microwave. There is no feces. Only in those little corners. And that's the place that you need to bait.
Okay, there is, there is the bait. Let me focus in on it. Oh, I'm upside down on my phone. And there it is in the corner where I stuck the bait, right in their face. Unless you do that, you're being lazy. Here is another nesting site I just found. Like I said, it's often ignored when you're doing a treatment to look. You're looking back here and you're saying, oh, look, it's clean. There's no signs. There's no infestation in this cabinet. It looks perfectly clean, right? Everybody ignores the front rail. There's a gap usually underneath that front rail. See those gaps? That is a place that you need to put the bait. Because right there is right behind here, right behind that faceplate and look where the infestation is. We're look where all the excrement is. It's not in the back where it's visible. You gotta stick your head inside that cabinet. You gotta look for the infestation. Now this is a beautiful thing that I'm seeing right there. That is the IGR at work, that point source disc causing that female. Look at those wings, how they're deformed. That egg is probably not gonna hatch. She's probably gonna drop it. That's a beautiful thing. Look around on this side. And there's infestation there on this side. There's the excrement. The back is totally clean. And you would not look back here. And that's where the problem is. Here is a common ignored place right underneath. Let me try to get the camera the other way. Right underneath there is ignored underneath the sink in the front plate underneath that sink. Look how many guys are in there. I just finished putting the bait right there. The nymph just went for it. Commonly ignored and assuming that roaches are going to walk five feet to find the bait. A female isn't going to do that. A gravid female is going to stay within a foot or two and she's going to eat very little and drink very little and there's a serious infestation behind here look at all the look at all that excrement guys no look see you know okay so this is where we ignore the cake plates we don't put bait in the cake plate i just finished putting bait right there and you ignore the cake plate and the roaches are walking around underneath there. So don't ignore those little cracks. There it is right there. There's another one right there, right next to the bait. And you ignore that, you lose an opportunity. And if they're hiding in that crack and that crack is wide enough, then like it is, nymphs could go in there. There you go. We got a very strange one. We got a point source where we believe it originated and we have a product. These are chickpeas, they're bonzos. Look how that bag is completely infested inside. The bag came with the roaches in it and they started spreading and this is the point source. Very, 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 very strange and the tech didn't see it when he did the initial service because this is not common. This is like one in 10,000 that this ever happens. So here's a training opportunity to, hey, inspect everything. Don't take anything for granted, even if you're following protocols. Why are all these roaches here? Which would have been my first thought, thinking they're just attracted to the food. But yes, it's the product that came infested and there, there it is.